Intel, then dial your operator. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. I want you to have an excellent holiday season. Have yourself a very little Christmas. Make your heart be light. <laughs> From now on, all troubles will be out of sight. Through the years, we all will be together. Let's get to it! <laughs> ah, story number one. How hard will it be for Joe Biden to keep his promises? Joe Biden made a lot of campaign promises to get elected, but each day that passes is showing how hard it will actually be to keep those promises because the country is already trying to rebound economically. Show me the money! <laughs> Forbes magazine has an article explaining how Goldman Sachs says that Joe Biden's student loan cancellation plan would have no impact on boosting the economy unless they're giving it be the boost. I'll boost the economy. I guarantee it. Spend the money, baby. Woo! <laughs> ah. It is it's still a war-torn region of the world, and now the decision to withdraw more troops. The question now is, who is going to pay for the $1 trillion war left from battles in Afghanistan? It's a lot of money. It could have went to education to uh, all types of things to me to the education back to me so i can get more presents you know, i'm sure you see how it works the more money you give the mediator the more everything works <laughs> i mean that in a good way <sighs> now in a quest to seek federal funding for abortion rep ayana presley uh she says that the Hyde Amendment's days are numbered. The amendment prevents tax dollars from being used to pay for abortions. The bill has been included in, a, in every federal spending bill since 1976. So who, who would want uh, federal dollars to pay for abortions? You know, you often think to yourself about the babies that could have been born. Those could have been my friends, my girlfriends, my associates, my business partners. Ladies, find a way to bring more life into the world for me to bless somebody. Well, those, <laughs> these stories are still developing. Story number one, that's why I made it this week. I'm showing a lot of love around the holidays, baby. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Woo! Story number two, the inside look at the education system during COVID-19. New data in is showing that a new there's a new outlook on the education system during COVID-19. Now, although many originally thought that remote learning was not effective, new data in is now showing that most children aren't are not falling behind as once thought and on average students are improving they have improved in both reading and math uh in reference now this is uh in conflicts with last week's data that was in now this is with no map test this fall so uh, no, uh nothing is officially accurate but they're saying that uh students have been improving in some areas so we'll keep an eye on story number two especially if you have kids and you want them to be learning while they're in class even when they're online big big headline and that's why i made it this week story number two Story number three, can China and the U.S. get back to business as usual under Biden? Now, in the term oil created by Trump in regards to relationships with China, Australia somehow got in the mix. They now fear that they will be abandoned under the Biden administration because they have been getting in some conflicts with China. So there's a lot happening inside of this story number three. Now, one new very interesting report by Fox News claims that China has been collecting the world's DNA according to, uh, now this is, this is according to some sources. Now this is adding fuel to the fire of many conspiracies surrounding the coronavirus. Uh, genetic data gives China the ability to create bioweapons that target certain groups of people, according to Gordon Chang, who is the man 
main source of this report in this report so that's a lot of uh information that is coming out and it could really add some fuel to an already growing conspiracy about COVID-19. More warnings about China's rapidly growing military keep making headlines. The headline in Newsweek claims that China will be able to fight foreign wars within the next 15 years. So that's a big, big headline as well. Another article that surfaced last week reads that there are threats to remove several Chinese firms from Wall Street because of some shady dealings. So keep an eye on story number uh, three as it develops in the coming weeks. A lot going on in relationships between the United States and China. Some people are actually saying that we need each other. We as in Americans and uh, anybody in America, we all need each other in this uh, seesaw battle. So let's see if it comes together in a bright, useful, loving way, especially around the holidays when you're looking at the gifts under the tree made in china <sighs> toasty story number four iran is making a case in the killing of one of their top scientists the killing of an Iranian nuclear scientist has the world mystified on what the Iranian scientist was actually working on. Either way, Iran is making a case and top officials will probably use whatever claims they have as leverage in a nuclear deal that incoming President Joe Biden wants to revitalize. Now, one BBC article last week surfaced stating that Iran rejected Biden's terms for reviving the nuclear deal. While, while sources are saying that Iran is making progress in obtaining a nuclear weapon. So there's a lot going on inside of story number four that has us all on the edge of our seats. Those who are concerned about foreign affairs and foreign policy, especially under this new administration. Are we strong enough to fight the battles, young people young americans well those are our top four stories that i made it this week i'll be right back with the top top four international headlines and developing news stories so don't go anywhere you're the mediator with me brian west i'll be right back All if you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number at inc.com, method 88com you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Whoo, I'm feeling holly jolly, baby. Whoo-wee. It's going to be a grand old Christmas time treating those with COVID-19. I can feel the energy, the love that's in the air, that's circulating, the love and joy of holiday cheer, baby. Holiday spirit. Woo! Ooh! Ooh! Wee! Ooh! Let's get to it! Story number five. Massachusetts Attorney General claims that Trump has done some illegal and unconstitutional things while serving as president. Now, let me look at my naughty and nice list. Is the president on the naughty or nice list? Let me check. Uh, I'll let you decide. <sighs> the Vanity Fair mag oh, an article in Vanity Fair is citing uh, Mara H uh, Healy's claims. He says that the state, this is the state attorney general. Uh, she filed, uh, I think, multiple uh, multi-state suits against the Trump administration nearly 140. Uh, 40 times uh, Mara Healy's uh, I guess she has some claims that's going on this is a this is a the Massachusetts Attorney General uh, she she compares she compares the number of I think the numbers to the Obama and the Bush administration she says that she's that he was and I, I there are claims of a hundred there's a hundred and forty times he was uh he was claimed they were against the Trump administration when George Bush and uh, Obama's were just 78 to 76. Now this is under the administration, so this is the times that lawsuits were filed to sue 
uh, the Trump administration compared to Obama and Bush in, the, in their eight years terms. This was just four years. He had 140 times that people tried to sue. That's a lot of times. Lawsuits piling up. Now, there is also a story in Esquire making the, the same claims. The headline reads that the president is running, was I guess is currently running a direct mail scam from inside the White House to help raise the needed funds. So there's a lot going on inside of story number five. Now, you'll hear it from different angles in the news. No matter if you're listening to radio, you may hear something different. But if you listen to some people from the op opposing side, they will say that uh, Trump has broken a lot of laws while he was in office. And if you look at this uh, this claim by, by Healy's, uh, I guess she's saying that there were claims, the claims number to 140 times that this administration has been sued, probably more than that. That's why story number five made in this week. Uh, is Trump on the naughty or nice list when it comes to being president? Big, big headline that made it in this week. Story number six. What will the GOP need to do now that Trump has lost the election? Some are saying that the GOP, the Republican Party, will need to rebrand itself after Trump. One article in Political penetrates the wall that Trump has built around the Republican Party in his four years. Now, the article pretty much creates a real picture of a hole that Donald Trump has blown in a party that will have to do some patching up up once Trump leaves office. The article talks about the handling of COVID-19, claims of a rigged election by Trump and his supporters, uh, the lashing out at a key high-ranking officials while in office, while also making some uh, key adjustments to the courts that were probably needed under Trump. Uh, now that Trump has lost the election, the backbiting in Washington may not be over just yet, though, because the Republicans still own the Senate. Now, the questions now are where will the GOP, where will they go from here? This is a big question. And, and, and on top of that, where will they go with having the majority but not the final say in the executive branch? Now, only time will tell how the friction in Washington earns out inside of this developing story. A judge orders Trump to restore DACA back to what it was under Obama. An analysis by Chris Saliza goes in detail uh, explaining the danger that Trump, Donald Trump, poses by engaging in conspiracy talk. This is an article and an analysis by CNN Polit Politics Reports. Now, the, uh, it's basically saying that Trump is engaging when he's talking about things that are happening. They're talking, they're, it's saying that it's conspiracy talk that's surrounding the election and other matters and w that basically center around his presidential term. The analysis is credible because with a with a with with the lack of enough legal wins to pr to prove the current sitting president which is Donald Trump which for saying that he is right about these claims and allegations that the election was rigged this may be hard for Trump to dispute because the reality is he lost the election that many are saying was fair so to sum all this up the article the analysis is basically saying that Trump is engaging he's he's taking some dangerous avenues by saying that it was a conspiracy that he lost the election and on top of that revving everybody up when uh, it may be hard for him to prove and on top of that he's lost multiple claims uh, already that say that the election was rigged so keep an eye on story number uh, six it has a lot to do with this administration and what is going on currently and current events and these stories are developing every day even when you have people storming michigan uh officials houses people saying that they will fight for trump there is a lot happening inside of story number uh, number six that has a lot to do with trump and how he has as has painted the Republican Party, the current Republican Party, and they will have to do a lot to repair whatever image that he has given them uh, in the in the future. So keep an eye on story number six. Big, big headline. Big, big developing news. Story number seven in the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made it in this week. The Supreme Court and the housing market made some headlines. The housing market may need some attention soon. Now, if we take this back to 2008, when Fannie and Freddie Mae lost $108 
billion dollars. Now, let's take a note that that is more money than they earned in the previous 37 years combined, according to a Vox article. If the federal government had stepped in the bankruptcy and collapse of Fannie and Freddie Mae, this would have resulted in a global depression and a meltdown of the financial system. Period. Now, a now present day, a one hundred and twenty four billion dollar Supreme Court case has a lot to do with that. Collins versus Mnuchin uh, wants the government to give a uh, to, wants the government to give up one hundred and twenty four billion because of multiple claims that the plaintiff. The plaintiffs have made uh, due to how uh, Fannie and Freddie Mae were bailed out. So they're making some claims in present day. Now, the key issue in this developing story is the simple fact that Fannie and Freddie Fannie and Freddie were bailed out and had no way of paying the federal government back besides with the, besides with the of paying them back with the assets that had already depreciated in value inside of the housing crisis. So this is an interesting story. Now this story shines a lot of light on a growing concern about the housing market. Another key talking point relating to the justice system is the is the backlog of halted jury trials that are growing with a lot of people sitting in jail waiting for their trials so these these stories inside of what's happening in the justice system are still developing because of COVID-19 and how it's been uh, holding up progress on a lot of these cases so keep an eye on story number seven it made it to the top two this week because we're talking about uh, uh, something that could really affect not only the housing market but could cause a global disaster if anything collapses and of and if something happens inside of the story. So keep an eye on story number seven. Big big headline. Big big developing news story. <laughs> story number eight and the top international headline and developing news story that made it this week. The COVID nineteen price tag is growing by the day. But who will be paying for it? Uh, the COVID-19 woes continue and it's coming with a huge price tag that continues to grow by the day. There have been multiple stories about how there will be a limited vaccine supply, but it's hard to leave out the cost that is accruing with this virus. Now you have funeral costs, job losses, medications, hospital bills, education costs, and even the economic costs down the road that, that, that is happening now that will later affect us. Now this is in a hopes for a speedy recovery that the world will also be hoping for when we talk about recovery this is not only just people in america but the whole world will be hoping for some help to pay for this covid 19 bill so it's not just you or the people at home or the people in the nurse workroom floor it's the whole world now the united kingdom is planning to tax the wealthy to pay for the damage brought on by covid 19 but this somebody's going to have to pay the U usa today says that over 68 percent of americans had financial setbacks in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic leaving the number one question inside of story number eight about this big big COVID-19 bill at the end of the day which is why story number eight made it to the top this week who will have to pay for this crazy chaotic disease well those are our top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made this week on top of the local ones that made it earlier in the show i want to thank you so much for tuning in i i always i hope you got something out of today's show i always get something out of doing the research as usual i like to thank all the news outlets the journalists the people on the front lines that keep us informed you deserve all the credit i am just a mediator if you want to show some support it doesn't take much all you have to do is visit the website on the screen buy something click on something read something watch something or just sponsor program thank you so much for tuning into the media this week with me brian west we're almost close to the christmas day and ho 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 and jolly jolly christmas well i'm out of here have a good week everybody thank you for tuning to the media this week with me brian west peace have no fear fellow citizens